All right, everybody, Coach Kilburn here with a video to try to help us pass our industry standard certification in Adobe InDesign CC. So this will be the first video in a series of videos, okay? Guys, first thing, you're going to need to be able to identify areas of a document. So here I have a pre-made document with some items, and we need to be able to identify things, okay? So guys, you need to be able to identify what the gutter is. The gutter is the space between the columns. So here's our gutter. The gutter is that small vertical space between our columns. Okay. Then obviously that makes these spaces your columns. So I have a three column setup. One column, two columns, three columns. The gutters fall in between the columns. The columns is where we place our text and images and other objects. We try to keep things out of the gutter, okay? Next thing, guys, this kind of pink border represents the margins. So when you create a new document, you can set up your margins, right? So you need to know that this is where the margins lie. Next, the edge of the page, the edge of the document. So where the white meets this gray back here, this is the document, this is not, this is the page edge. It's the edge of the page. Then we have our slug area. This blue line represents the slug area. You should remember slug from Photoshop. The slug area is where information goes for your printer. So when you file export, you can choose things that will show up in the slug area. Again, it's information for the printer. And the last area, guys, is this bleed, this red line. Now, right now, we only have a slug on the top, but we can put a slug on the top, bottom, left, and right. Same thing with the bleed. In this case, we have a 30-pixel bleed all the way around the edge of the document. What's the bleed for? The bleed is if we have a color on our background or an image or texture we want to bring that all the way out to the bleed it helps alleviate printing problems that way when they cut along the edge of the document here we get all of the color or all of the image okay so gutter column margin page edge slug bleed you need to know all that information, okay? So guys, when you are ready to send out to a printer, let's say our document here is completed, we're ready to send out to the printer, we're gonna have links. We're definitely gonna have a link to this image because we placed an image. So links come when you place text from another document or you place an image or a hyperlink. I can see down here along the bottom I have an error. So I need to open the panel that tells me what the error is and allows me to fix it. That's called the pre-flight panel. Where do we open all panels from in Adobe? Yes, window. So we're gonna go to window. Then we need to think, right? We're outputting our file. We're outputting to a printer, right? So we need to be able to go down to output and pre-flight. Think of you're outputting the file, you're sending it out to the printer. Pre means before, right? So we have to check this item before we send it out, right? Here's my error. I have one error. Here's my error. I have overset text. If I look down here, there's my overset text indicator. So I, as the user, have to fix that somehow. There's a couple of ways I can fix that, okay? So I can either get in here with my type tool and just delete enough text out of this text box. So this overset uh, text icon goes away, or I can do what's called threading my text. I want to thread the remaining text up to this column here. Now you can't thread text unless you have a column. So this only works if you have another column to thread it into. So I'm not gonna show you how to take your type tool and delete text, cause that's easy. But I will show you how to thread the text. You get your selection tool, the black arrow. 
you're going to click and kind of hold for a second on top of this overset text indicator right then you're going to get this little thumbnail notice the thumbnail has the overset text on it so i know it's working if you click and hold on that overset text indicator and now you see this little paragraph of text is following your icon your cursor you're good to go now i can come up here and click i just threaded that text okay now look, I have no errors. Guys on the test, they may have a few errors. They're probably gonna be links to images. If you click on the error like I did, in the info section, they will tell you exactly what to do. So make sure you click on each error, look down in the info section. Guys, they'll tell you exactly what the settings are on and exactly what needs to be fixed. The error may be overset text, it could be something to do with the bleed. It could be something to do with the slug. Again, read the info in the box. They'll tell you what to do. If you have to change anything on the document, like the columns, the gutter, the bleed, the slug, guys, it's going to be under File, Document Setup. That makes sense, right? If you think about it, just stop for a second and think. I want to change the setup of my document. Wow, file document setup. Yes, makes a lot of sense. So I can go into my document setup. I can change the number of pages. I can uncheck facing pages, right? I can change my margins. I can change the orientation. I can change the width and the height. I can change my bleed. I can change my slug. Guys, remember these have locks. This one's locked. Right, so I can change these independently. This one's not locked. I'm sorry, this one's locked, so if I change one, it's gonna change all of them. This one is not locked, so I can change them independently. So guys, if you need to go in and change the bleed or the slug, if you want the same number all the way around, make sure it's locked. If you just want independent numbers, you want these boxes to be different, make sure you unlock it, okay? Guys, you can adjust the layout here, all right? You just need to go to File, Document Setup, okay? Pre-flight panel. You're definitely going to have some questions on the test about the pre-flight panel, okay? All right, guys, now let's wrap some text, right? I got this image in a, in a content frame, but the text is behind it. That's no good. My viewers can't read that text. So I got to do some wrap text. Guys, it's a panel. Where do I open all panels? Window. In this case, I'm dealing with text and I want to wrap it. So text wrap, it's a panel. This is no text wrap. This is wrap around the bounding box. This is wrap around an object shape. This is jump the object. And this is jump to the next column. Guys, read the question on the test. Whatever they tell you to pick, that's what you pick. If you can't remember what they're called, notice I'm just hovering over the icon and a balloon pops up and tells me the name, okay? In this case, I wanna wrap around the bounding box. So guys, I gotta select it, right? I gotta select the text, I gotta select the image, I gotta select wrap around bounding box, right? And then guys, they may tell you to offset the text right notice this lock is locked so it's offsetting everything if it only tells you to offset it on the right and left unlock it right and only offset it on the left and then the right right so guys you'll definitely get a question about wrapping text just read the question do what they're telling you to do okay all right guys next you're gonna have to work with some shapes right so let's make an arrow out of two shapes. Now I can go to my shapes. I want to go ahead and pre-pick a color for my shape. I want to pick this blue color. I'm going to click and drag a rectangle. Now I want to make an arrow, right? So I can go to another shape. I need a triangle basically on the edge of this to give the arrow point. So I'm going to go to my polygon tool, my polygon shape. 
If I click once, my polygon shape dialog box opens, I can control the number of sides. So eight octagon, 10 decagon. In this case, I want a triangle. Polygon is a multi-sided shape. Three sides, triangle, right? Boom, there's my triangle. Okay. Now I wanna move this down here. I wanna rotate it so I can go to, I'm sorry, object, transform, rotate. I wanna rotate 90 degrees clockwise, right? Now I can use my arrow keys on the keyboard to move things around. Now guys, look, I have two shapes. I have the triangle, I have the rectangle. You may get a question on the test where they want you to unite or combine, right? Or merge those shapes into one shape. So I have to select both shapes. Select one, hold down shift to select the second. Or, as long as you don't have any other text frames or object frames, content frames around here, you can just click, hold your click, oops, click, hold your click, and swipe a box over both. See, now they're highlighted. If I click and swipe over both the boxes and this text frame, notice it selects the text frame too. So it may be better for you to click one shape, hold shift, click the next. Now, how do I combine those together? There's a panel called the Pathfinder panel. Where do I open all panels? Yes, under Window. Window, I'm dealing with objects. So I gotta go to Window Object, Pathfinder. Guys, the Pathfinder will add, it will combine, it will subtract, it will create an intersection. It'll exclude the overlap, which is the opposite of the intersection, and it'll minus the back. In this case, I want to combine them together, right? Now, guys, notice I don't have two shapes. I have one shape, right? So I've made one shape. They may ask you to create like a crescent moon type shape. So let's go and get a circle, right? Let's change the fill color just so it's different. If I want an oval, I just click and drag. But if I want a perfect circle, I hold down shift. Shift gives me that perfect circle. Okay. So I got one. Guys, I'm just going to copy this. Control copy. Control C to copy. I'm going to control V to paste. Just so you can see the difference, I'm going to change the color. All right. Then I'm going to move this into place. Let's move it over here. Okay, so guys, you may get something like this. And they want you to subtract the front shape from the back shape so it looks like a crescent moon. Again, to select both, I gotta hold shift, select both, or click and draw a box around them both. Go to my Pathfinder window. In this case, I want to subtract the frontmost object. Guys, read the description. Look at that little box. Don't be a robot when you take the test. Be a human. Use your brain and think. Okay? Boom. Now it got rid of the front shape. Now I don't have two shapes. I just have one shape. Okay? Boom. So make sure you know how to use your Pathfinder panel. There. All right, guys. So let's get the shape down here. Guys, there may be a question about deliverables, right? What are some deliverables that you can give to your client, right? So you are the artist. You're meeting with your client. What are things that you can deliver to the client, okay? You could deliver comps, compositions, right? Short little mock-ups of what your design would look like, right? Or specifications, what they call specs, right? Deliverables, specifications. It's going to be an INDD file. It's going to be a PSD. It's going to be in CMYK color mode. It's going to use these fonts, right? Those are your specifications, specifications for your file or for your project. 
The other one's comps, compositions. Again, you're periodically going to present to your client little comps or compositions so they can see your project as you work. Okay. So the deliverables you can give to your client are comps and specs. All right. All right, guys, you're going to need to know these terms, right? These are design terms that you just need to know. Rhythm. You need to know rhythm. You need to know balance. You need to know proportion. You need to know negative space. Right? You need to know focal point. Right? So guys, balance. Things are equally, equally distributed on the left and right or top and bottom, right? You don't want the top too heavy or the right too heavy. Things have to be balanced, right? Guys, rhythm is like a pattern that varies or changes. Think of like music or dance moves. It's a pattern, a series of steps that, that alters and changes. That's rhythm. Proportion, we're talking about size next to each other. Look at the size of this arrow in proportion to this shape, right? Or look at the proportion of this text to this shape. Guys, negative space is space that is not being used or utilized. Negative space is not always white. Could be black, could be another solid color. But anywhere where you're not utilizing space, that's called negative space. Negative space is designed to give the eye a visual rest. Then, guys, the focal point, you should know that from Photoshop. The focal point is your point of emphasis on your design. It's what you want to draw the viewer's attention to first. It's what you're telling them is the most important. So make sure you know these terms as well. All right? You need to know a few other terms. All right? You should know these from Photoshop already. You should know what Creative Commons refers to. You should know intellectual property. You should know public domain. And you should know work for hire. Work for hire is kind of new, but just think about it, right? Creative Commons, that's a new trend in design and technology. I make something that belongs to me, but I want other people to be able to use it. I want us to commonly be able to create. So you can use copyright material in a Creative Commons as long as you're giving the owner credit, right? Intellectual property, anything you make or design is your intellectual property. A design, a photograph, a painting, a dance routine, right? A rap, a poem, it's all your intellectual property. Public domain means that something had a copyright, but it's so old, it's been around for so long, anybody can use it now. Once things go into the public domain, that means there is no copyright. That means anybody can use anything that's considered public domain. And then work for hire is what it is. Somebody's hiring you to do work, right? So you will not own the copyright to that information, the person that hired you on that okay so you need to know your two deliverables you need to know these design terms okay and you need to know these about copyright issues okay guys i think we've done enough for one video let's stop it here make sure you know how to do all of these things and i'll start working on the second video